In your fighting game journey, you will meet players that will be good at blocking. You notice your throws are being tacked and your high-low okizeme is being blocked. And as you're getting punished, you wonder how you're going to open these people up. In this video, I'll be talking about block strings and how you can utilize them to condition your opponents to eventually open them up for damage. This video will use examples from Street Fighter, Guilty Gear, and Melty Blood, but just remember, this concept can be applied to pretty much all fighting games. Let's start off with going over what block strings are. Block strings are a series of attacks a player uses when the opponent is expected to block. But wait, you might say, isn't the whole point to get hits when you attack? Why do mids and lows when you can go for throws and overheads? Now, getting damaged is the entire purpose, but risk reward must be considered if you want to win on a consistent basis. For example, a lot of overhead moves generally have long startup and frame disadvantage on block. If the opponent defends well, they can either interrupt for a counter hit or block and get the advantage. In the case for throws, damage in Okizeme can be less desirable than normal combos. It seems like good block strings are safer and have better damage potential, but is easier to block. So how are we going to get those hits in with such attack sequences? In order to answer this question, we need to understand two key aspects, conditioning and patience. Generally, if you do the same block strings on an opponent, they will eventually become comfortable. They will build an expectation from your strings and prepare based on it. Let's use Guilty Gear Exert Kai's basic Okizeme block string of kick, slash, crouching slash, heavy slash, then stun edge. All attacks are mids and lows, so the defender can simply block low, then get ready to act when stun edge is blocked. If the Kai player continues to do this, the defender will become more and more comfortable blocking the entire string, since that is the safest option. Once that expectation is set, the Kai player can do risky overheads such as grease severing dust in the middle of the string to open up the opponent. These moves are very slow and easy to block under normal circumstances. However, by conditioning the opponent and making them feel safe, the chances of such slow overheads hitting will become much higher. <laughs> The second thing to consider is the opponent's patience. Some characters have very long block strings or strings that can loop. When put into this situation, the defender will eventually take an action other than blocking to either escape or counter the string. The attacking player can take advantage of the situation to get an opening and land a hit. Let's use another of Kai's block string to show how this works. I'll do a string of kick, slash, then forward kick. The important thing to note here is that 4 kick has a 4 frame advantage on block, so if the opponent is aware of this, they will generally continue to block. This allows the Kai player to do a risky redash to close the gap and loop the block string. However, if the opponent catches on and expects a redash, they may do a counterattack to interrupt it. The key thing here is that the interruption attempt is being done at a huge frame disadvantage for the defender. If the Kai player expects a retaliation, the redash can be replaced with an attack to stuff the interruption attempt. This is what we call a frame trap. Kai player is creating a situation where the opponent is coaxed to press a button in a disadvantage situation only to get counter hit. 
The thing to note here is that frame traps are prediction attacks and are not based on reaction, so you have to guess when the opponent becomes impatient. I personally imagine a hidden gauge underneath the health bar that will go down as the opponent blocks. I call this the patience gauge or meter. Think of it like King of Fighters guard gauge or Blade Blue's barrier gauge, but specific to the player and situation. Some players may have longer bars and prefer safer escapes, whereas others may be shorter and go for riskier counters. This is something you will have to pick up during a match and adjust accordingly. Now that we covered the two basic usages of block strings, let's go into a bit more detail for the block strings themselves. There are generally two types, true or gapless strings and strings with gaps. True block strings are attacks that keep the opponent in block stun the entire time. This means that as long as the opponent is holding back, no matter what button is being pressed, the defender will not be able to do it. Here, you can see the defender mashing buttons while holding back, but nothing is coming out. This type of block string cannot be frame trapped, but is effective in creating pressure through guaranteed hits. I recommend using this as a conditioning tool to open up the opponent with mix-ups. Strings with gaps on the other hand allows the defender to take actions other than blocking. This creates opportunities for frame traps, but also becomes susceptible to invisible reversals. So it's very important to change your traps based on defender tendencies. For example, if the opponent is fuzzing on an attack or mashing a normal on block string gaps, you can do a frame trap with small windows. If your opponent is playing a reactionary style, you can do things like walk forward or dash in the middle of a string to bait a response and stuff it. If you have an opponent who matches reversals on every opening, it might be a good strategy to block on a safe gap to bait and punish. As you can see, block strings may not give immediate damage, but may create opportunities for it once mastered. With that said, this will be the end of this video. If you have any questions or things you want to add, let me know in the comments. As a side note, this video used a lot of concepts from other videos such as power blocking and frame data explanation video. I suggest checking those out and subscribing to this channel for more fighting game guides. Alright, till next time, have fun with fighting games.